Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video we're gonna be talking about advanced bevels in Blender. Let's go! Alright, so before we start there are two things I wanna mention, okay? One of them, this is gonna be a video that's gonna incorporate Mesh Machine workflow, so if you don't have Mesh Machine, follow along and see why you need it. And Mesh Machine is the only software that allows you to run cat-like bevels in Blender, which basically is literally impossible with vanilla. And then two is that you'll notice I'm using two screencast add-ons. One of them is on the right, which is basically fucked. It's the screencast keys and it doesn't work properly. Also, it doesn't work inside of Hardup's menus. So for instance, when I'm going to go to, you know, cube and then I'm going to start beveling this, right? And scroll my mouse, you see that nothing is happening. Uh, but the, the one on the left actually shows everything. Now, the one on the left is created by Proxy, which is a main programmer on a Hard Ops and Box Hunter team. So the team C and, you know, Proxy is a legend. So he's developing a new add-on that will help us uh, to properly display all the screencast keys. So you're going to have two of them on a the screen. Um, you know, a bit confusing, I know, but at least you're going to get all the info you need. Now, the last thing is if you're new to Blender and you're still struggling with the workflows, I would highly recommend our Jumpstart course, which is fantastic, and it will allow you to kickstart your journey into Blender. It's free, it's on our website, and the link is in the video description. Okay, so let's grab a cylinder here. Let me turn off this mod cup because madness. And uh, bump this up here from 32 to 80, okay? You wanna have like 80 verts, you know, you wanna have, I mean, segments. You wanna have something really dense. Uh, because we're gonna be adjusting a few things rx90 and let's rotate it uh, by 90 degrees uh, by the way just for the record um this screencast keys that's a shift okay that's alt and this is control this is gonna be adjusted for the time being uh these are the symbols so again alt shift control okay so remember that cool so now what we want to do here is we want to uh, s y and scale this okay a bit and i'll show you a cool trick to smooth shading this really easily now if i wanted to smooth shade that with hard ups going through sharpen the only problem is that i'm gonna get my uh, edges here sharpened up and i don't want that because i don't want sharp edges when i'm working with mesh machine all i want is for this mesh to be shaded smooth and i want auto smooth to be added so the really cool trick to do that quickly is to go to bevel right and cancel with right mouse button so you go to bevel and then you cancel this will not add a modifier, but what it will do is shade it smooth and also it will, you know, add um, auto smooth here to mesh, which is really what we need. So cool, we got that going. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add some loops here. So let's add some loops here. Okay, cool. And now we're going to go to Y menu with Smash Machine and stash the mesh. We need to stash the information of the normals uh, for future normal transfers. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a um, you know end gun and we're going to cut this here like that okay and we're going to press B for bevel and scroll it in and maybe 26 segments now if you don't see the segments on the bottom um, the segment count you need to go here to hard ups menu and enable box cutter notifications uh, here with this cutter what we're gonna do is we're going to actually run some uh, loops here on this cutter like this and uh you know that should do and we're going to select the cutter select this mesh here and we're going to stash it as well here we're going to cut this um through with dots so enable dots here you need to be in perspective mode select this mesh hold control and draw a circle here hold shift and scroll up so you can adjust the number of you know the segments to maybe you know what let's go 70 you know and cut it through and click and we're going to add some segments here as well um, because when you add segments to your cutters they're going to be projected onto the mesh we do have segments outside but we don't have segments inside so you need to project them through the cutter onto the mesh to the inside to the inner part of this cut yeah so select this cutter shift select this shape and go to y menu and stash it so now we got, uh, you know, cutters stashed. We also have uh, this main mesh stashed. I'm going to actually stash it one more time just for fun. So here what we're going to do is we're going to apply this. Okay, so smart apply. And now what we can do is we can actually run uh, offset cut on this because, you know, beveling this here would be basically impossible, right? So that's where the offset cut tools come in handy. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to wire menu and use the offset cut. Now, if you don't see that option here, what you need to do is go to preferences under mesh machine and you need to enable this experimental option here. Okay. Save preferences. You're good to go. So here, click out, click. That's the L select with mesh machine. Go to wire menu and click on um, offset cut. Now offset cut comes with options and we're going to be talking about it right now because it might be a bit confusing. First of all, what you can um, uh, do is you can optimize the amount of, um, you know, this cuts here on the mesh. And you can turn them on and off if you want. Now, occasionally what's going to happen is that um, some of uh, these segments here on the curved um, area will be uneven, which is where I would just turn this optimization off. However, in this situation, I can see that everything is peachy. So I might actually turn it on and leave it like that. Smoothing is interesting as well. I like to turn it on. It's going to smooth us out all the arches, which is cool. And then you also can adjust the width of this um, cut here. I would just hold shift for that. And you can also adjust the factor. Factor is interesting because it will allow you to create much more dense uh, uh, the bevels but, but you can see clearly now that when I create a denser geometry in here we have some kind of breakages in here in the geometry so it's not even so when you turn off this optimization that's gonna even up uh, all the things now now my advice is do not run a mesh here on the bevel that's much denser than the surrounding geometry because you will end up with some weird shading problems so you know don't overdo it this is completely fine you could go even lower on that you know and this is perfectly fine uh, just a uh, control B that and don't overdo the bevel itself as well. Just create more or less, you know, even spacing here between all these edges. Okay. Now, even geometry is going to usually enforce really nice shading uh, all around, which is really helpful. Now, click alt click here and right click and mark seam. We need seams to be able to separate later the uh, sections of geometry for normal transfer. Now, when you go here and click out, click and go to offset cut, Blender will remember, well, Mesh Machine will remember your settings. Now, you see that here we got some shading problems. They most likely call, uh, caused by the fact that, you know, uh, maybe the factor is not, uh, not properly set. Maybe you can adjust it a little bit here and play with it to create a little bit better shading. You could also, uh, you know, adjust the iterations, which could help with shading as well. Sometimes it kind of tightens things up, you know, and helps with shading a little bit. So you could do that as well. And, uh, you know, this would do, maybe our bevels have to be so wide. So we could just, you know, uh, create a slightly narrower bevel, something like this. And then control B then. And now here you want to go a little bit denser on the bevel because the angle is much steeper than this one. This is a wide angle. That's actually quite steep angle, you know. So this is uh, really tight, yeah? So you might want to go with higher number of segments here just to create a smoother transition. Now you can see clearly here that we got shading breakage and we're going to be fixing that. So here we're going to select this edge and control B that. And then I'm going to press uh, shift tilde. This is my shortcut for uh, this tool here. Let me just run mark, sh uh, sorry, mark seam here. Now let me show you the shortcut. So click, alt, click, and I'm going to, you know, run a bevel here. You can go here to select and loops and boundary loops. And if you right click, you can set a shortcut minus set to shift tilde, which allows me to set uh, select the boundary loops very easily. Kind of speeds up the whole process. So now we have to um, do the same thing here. Shift tilde and mark seam, click, alt click, shift tilde, you know, and mark seam, right? Cool. So now the entire mesh is isolated. So when I'm going to go to face mode and L, press L hovering over one of these uh, areas, you will see that it's going to select the, you know, just the area that's uh, basically defined by this mark, uh, this edges marked a seam. So now what I can do is go to my stashed normals and uh, I can actually transfer them. So go to normals, transfer, and you can, by scrolling your mouse, you can actually select which you know which option you want to choose. We want to choose the cylinder and just click. And this will transfer the normals from the cylinder to this mesh. 
And the same here, we can fix this problem on this edge here. You can see clearly it's breaking here. So if I go to a matcap, right? Um, if I'm gonna switch this matcap to something different, you will probably see the distortions uh, happening here in this area, right? All these breakages. So what we can do here is transfer the inner part. And there's a really cool tr trick for that. So let's go to face mode and select this inner bit, okay? And we're gonna use the cutter that cuts this um, inner bit of this uh, geometry. So Y and normals and transfer. And now what we need to do is we need to flip it because you can see that it's actually a kind of weird shading, right? Because the faces are flipped. So when you press F, you're gonna flip the faces and you're gonna transfer the shading and look, everything is peachy. The same thing it can be done here. Um, there's some weird shading going on. So we're gonna go to normals and transfer and we're gonna select this cutter, press F to flip it and boom. And you got yourself a pristine, perfect, um, you know, perfectly shaded mesh, no problems at all. So let's grab a new cylinder and um, RX90 and move it somewhere here. We're gonna scale this on Y axis a little bit and kind of move it somewhere here. All right, show up in that. And we're going to select both of these. In fact, let's apply scale. So Control A applies scale. Grab these two faces and just, you know, bevel them a little bit. And we're going to grab this cutter. So Alt H and Shift 2. Grab this cutter inside, which is, uh, which is which one? Which is this, this one, right? And you know, move it somewhere here. So shift D Y and difference. So let's just sharpen this and, you know, um, bevel this one. So we can dissolve this edge and just bevel that here. And, you know, Bob Junkel here, we can do the same thing. Just bevel this a little bit and peachy. We can mirror this to the other side with Altex and we're good to go. And, uh, we can add a screw so we could actually grab we could actually grab another cylinder or we could grab the cutter. So Alt H, Alt H and Shift 2, and we could grab this cutter and move it somewhere here to the middle and extend it in Y axis like this. Okay. And we could shift it to, uh, shift it to life. So a Q and settings and shift click on shade solid, which will basically bring this shape to. Um, to a solid state and we're going to apply scale so control apply scale and we're going to clean all these uh, edges here now because we have too many loops we don't need them so go to operations and clean mesh with hard ops which will remove all this junk select all the faces with alt click and we're going to go to right click menu and machine tools and thread now if you don't see the thread menu go ahead and enable it under preferences by the way i have a videos two videos on machine tools how to use it properly they massive and they explain every single tool you know that's in that add-on so go ahead and watch it cool so we got that going on and you know um if you wanted to keep adding on top of this shape you can so we could grab another cylinder maybe 80 is too many let's go with 60 okay because we're gonna be scaling it down so ry90 and then you know let's scale it like that and s shift x and scale it down and we could move it somewhere here to make it a bit bigger and we could create an outrageous connection here in blender which technically would be impossible to do with vanilla let's just add a lot of loops in here and we're going to apply scale here and we're going to um boolean this okay so click alt click y and stash it right then we're going to boolean this so go here to booleans and union right and then we're going to apply this so operation smart apply and that's where the mesh machine is going to shine watch this click out click impossible selection then we're going to go to y and offset cut and that's where the magic happens we're going to literally eat up all this geometry here create like a massive bevel right and just you know chair for this like that we bevel this like this and look at that and now because we have normal transfer up you know option I click alt click and you know mark seam not mark sharp 
Maxim, that's what I wanted. Click, Alt, click, and Maxim. Now, if you wanted to clean up some of these connections here, what you could do is you could run the uh, Boolean cleanup and you could literally, you know, connect some of these edges and clean it up a little bit. I don't think it's necessary in this case. So, so we're going to simply transfer normals. So Y and we're going to go to um, normals and transfer and we're going to grab this cylinder. So this one and we're going to literally transfer it and the same thing here. And we're going to remove this sharp edge. So unmark this. We're going to bevel it like this and we're going to shift tilde, right click, mark seam. Let's actually connect some of this stuff here. So click, alt click and we're going to run the boolean cleanup. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, some mess in here. I'm going to fix this uh, GG and move it somewhere here like this. And let's see if we can actually fix this here. The same thing. We need to, you know, remove this mark sharp and we need to bevel this and shift tilde and shift tilde and mark seam. Okay. And now we should be able to do that. So L and let's go to normals and transfer and transfer this. And there you go. There's your, you know, there's your shape transferred and then we can mirror this to the other side and you got yourself, you know, really cool, really cool shape with crazy bevels. These bevels are actually a little bit too big, but you know, who cares? So let's just go here and uh, hold control. And uh, let me see that uh, we can draw a shape in here in perspective and cut through. There you go. We can apply that. So operation smart apply. And we can just simply run a bevel here. Shift tilde and mark seam. And uh, we can just mirror this to all the sides with shift. So alt X and hold shift and we can add some screws here from, we can do this with kit ups, links to kit ups and hard ups and all these add-ons are in the video description. So you can grab the free hard ups inserts by Master Xeon for uh, kit ups. They're brilliant and I use them quite a lot. Uh, add insert here and let's just reset rotation RY90 and you can just disable the naming here because it's a bit annoying so you do it under view and here what we could do is move a cursor to the face so shift s and move cursor to the face select this one and move it to cursor and then reset rotation ry90 and you are set perfectly here in the middle and we can do this and move it outside so gx move it somewhere here like this and we could scale it just a little bit and control one to add some, you know, some more segments. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit better. Remove these mats and then hold shift, alt X, hold shift and mirror to all the sides. And boom, you're done. And there you go, guys. That's our shape. Looks pretty cool. Like you can see, shading is perfect and uh, looks really nice. Even if you go to some demanding and, you know, crazy mud cup like this one, you will see that. Look at that shading. Right, it's flawless. So you can create insane bevels in Blender using Mesh Machine. That's literally impossible with vanilla Blender, so don't even try it because it's not gonna happen. And if you do find a way, it probably takes like seven weeks. So forget about it. You know, we have only a certain amount of days left on this planet, so don't be stupid, get add-ons and work smart. Thanks so much for watching, see you in the next one.